You got anything left? No. <laughs> this. I knew I shouldn't have came here. I should have said this place and not came. Give you my hundred dollars. This. Took, gave me back my hundred dollars. Well, I thought about hitting that guy right away. And I thought, I'll let him go. I don't want to him. You know, I should have followed my instinct. And yeah. I should have hit him as hard as I could. Well, I was real disappointed the Kansas guys didn't show up. I mean, they just totally wimped on us. And you guys are Jayhawker barbecuers. Trouble in mind. Brisket sandwich. Well, we love Missouri. We love Kansas. <laughs> we serve everything. Missouri hog, though. <laughs> to, be, to be an art car certified, I figured, well, how are you going to be a, a certified art car? So I said, well, I'm going to go in an art car parade. I mean, how can you not be? They let me in the art car parade as an art car, so therefore I am an art car. It became Max, uh, you know, uh, his central uh, purpose, which is great. Everybody needs a purpose. And Missouri drivers were feared by Iowa, and likewise, and Kansas. Kansas drivers seem to always be feared more in Missouri. Now I'm going to have a bunch of Missouri guys mad at me because I didn't say they were the ones. Now when you guys are out here against each other, do you try not to hit each other? Uh, until it comes down to the end, then we got to get it on, then it's just plain a day. Right. So are you pretty proud to take out Les uh, Foster, who did pretty well, uh, Big O Tires? Oh, yeah, he, he run good. He's a strong runner. He lost, he lost the steering early, and I knew I'd get around him. He wouldn't have to drill me at the end. And then it seemed like you had a grudge match with 007 over there. Uh, first and second, that's what it's all about, 4,000 bucks. Like Derby so much. I mean, truly, I mean, it's a total equalizer. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter what you are. Once you put your helmet on and you're out there and you do the work to your car, and there you go. You're just out there, and you better have your you better have your together. Or you're gonna get smashed, or you better smash somebody else. So in my promotions, in my derbies, I capitalize on that theory because believe me, the border war is still alive and well. <laughs> These guys from Missouri and Kansas hate each other, literally. And it's obvious when they get in the derby arena, and you're seeing today basically a Kansas derby. There's very few Missouri drivers here, but you get a solely Missouri-Kansas derby, you better look out. Our derbies are civil war on wheels. <laughs> So literally, we go across the state line with our Missouri drivers and attack them in Kansas, and they come to Missouri and attack us. Have, do you, have you ever gone up against any of the Jayhawk drivers? Oh yeah. What do you think of those guys? They cheat good. 
Uh, if we go over the over the bank like we did last night and can get back in, that's fair game. Or is he out? If we go over the bank, he's out. Put a boat on it. Well, you're on what? Uh, last night we had a car go over the bank in between the fence and the bank. You guys want him to come back in or no. you want him to be out? Out. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Go over the mud, you're out there. You're out. Okay. Another one to bring up. <laughs> we roll a car out there. We got to stop the race. Safety. Roll him back over. You want that car to run or not? Run? Okay. He runs. If we don't, the crowd will come kill us. I've been wrecking demolition derby cars for 22 years. By wrecking a car this year makes it 22 years. Uh, you can take your frustrations out, you know, there's nobody, no phones ringing, you know, nobody telling you you're doing right or wrong, you're just out there tearing it up. The Civil War on Wheels concerns demolition derby on the western Missouri and eastern Kansas border area. As many drivers would not cross over from state to state, there was, however, an intense rivalry between these two sets of contestants. Demo Derm is one of the most fast-paced and exciting forms of automotive sports, featuring duels of determination and gearhead skills. It takes many persons to form a demolition derby team, but only one driver enters the heat, and in this sport, only the last man or woman Still in command of a moving vehicle leaves victorious, leaving other competitors in the shower of dust, waiting for the bobcat to pull them. Children truly do enjoy this sport, as do individuals and families, large and small. The county fair movement is at the forefront of sporting this form of automotive crash mess. The fairs themselves are colorful, spectacle. With carny rides, old timey game attractions, and corn dog stands galore. This is a gory sport, guys. With dirt clogs thrown into the stands, the smell of spilled gasoline, oil, antifreeze, everything up in the air. There is no more favorite American pastime for real. Because it's a car obsessed society. But it may be a dying sport. Because each year, you know, we can't find any older model cars. They're all destroyed. Not in the arena of the, of the derbies, but in the sad trajectory of scrapyard alleys. Now, this film is based on the border war concept of promoter Greg Clemens, and it also follows the smash mouth career of Kansas City Art Institute alum Mac McClanahan, whose team, We Ain't Stupid, went from demolition derby to art car salt flat racing world champions. We invite you to enter the heat, dig into the pits. Sit on your heels and enjoy Civil War on Wheels. Myself, Patrick, and Brandon, my brother, the Sumner brothers, were really interested in when we met Mac McClanahan at the art scene of around YJ's, David Ford's YJ's snack bar. And we met him and we saw him many times. We went to his car blessings. We went to the Mardi Gras parade. We were at everything that happened, St. Simone. And um, we followed Mac to the Wyandotte County Fair and we got pit passes and we were down in there shooting around and learning, meeting everybody, all of Mac's friends, all of Mac's crowd. Because Mac was really a chieftain of, the, of, a, of a certain major clique of the art scene. Then we met Greg Clemens. Greg Clemens is a character. Greg Clemens is an old school Missouri boy who knows a lot about the border wars and the Civil War 
and he realized that if he could get Kansas versus Missouri drivers to compete, that the crowds would go wild. So Civil War on Wheels was this overarching promotion of Greg Clemens. And while Greg Clemens knew about Mac McClanahan and We Ain't Stupid, We Ain't Stupid didn't know about Greg. Greg Clemens and Civil War on Wheels promotions knew about Mac McClanahan and the difference between Mac and We Ain't Stupid and the country boys that were the rest of the racers. But We Ain't Stupid was so self-involved in their own art scene and their own art project that they actually didn't know they were competing in a civil war on wheels. It's been around about 50 years. Demolition Derby goes back to the fairgrounds. Uh, horse tracks used to predominate the fairs, and Kansas survived the Civil War uh, better than Missouri did, and they celebrated their fairs longer. Uh, Missouri has fewer long-lasting fairs, and their fairgrounds to this day predominantly have uh, equestrian events and rodeos, and they don't want cars leaving metal in their arenas. So Missouri has fallen behind Kansas in that respect. Certain parts of Missouri is strong, but in my particular district, I'm starting over as if the war just ended. Because there is a lot of tension still between Missouri and Kansas. If you know your Civil War history, it's what we call the Burn District. Greg Clemens was fascinating because he knew the history of the border wars and the Civil War era in Kansas and Missouri and realized that those old feuds had never ended. So we, we, we fell in love with the Civil War on Wheels concept, meeting Greg, all while still following Mac McClanahan and We Ain't Stupid. Before the Civil War, Missouri and Kansas would come across the state line and thieve and rob, and there's just a lot of trust issues between Missouri and Kansas. There always has been, probably even before the border wars, there's been a lot of trust uh, trust issues. There was an underground railroad. There was uh, all kinds of gossip whether he was a Union man or a Confederate man and to me it just spills over even to today. I don't think that trust between Missouri and Kansas is through. You go to a KU game or a MU game and the people are just going crazy. I mean some of the best events in, in the United States are pitted right here in the metro area of Missouri versus Kansas. Anyway, it became a series of derbies. The first derby we ever put together was in a field behind my house in Uric, Missouri. And it was, uh, we literally carved it out of the bush. Just found a flat spot and graded it off and called everybody up that we knew that was into derby cars. And boy, we had 40 cars show up for the first event. And a lot of the Kansas guys were a little leery to come over to Missouri. And I began to notice the Missouri guys would talk bad about Kansas. They didn't want to go across the state line. And so I figured the best place maybe for this series to happen was Platte County Fair and Tracy, Missouri. And right across the river over at Wyandotte County Fair, those guys were accepting of crossing that river to come race with each other. They'd done it for years. So we found out that's where the best drivers were from was that area. Well, I met Jeff James with the XDDL. We're both promoters. He's from Pennsylvania. I'm from Missouri. And if you watch your history, the Yankees, of course, from Pennsylvania settled in Kansas, which is primarily settled by Yankees. Lawrence, Kansas was a bad, bad Civil War town. We got any Jayhawker fans here? What about me? Missouri fans? You know what happened when they got to Lawrence, Kansas? They burned the town to the ground in 1863. Let's hear from Missouri. <laughs> Let's hear from Kansas. Are you mad? Are you still mad, Kansas? You can trace it back to the days of old, and they are protective of their property. And, uh, you know, my, my family is from that era and lost their property and their houses and had to build it back up. I live on a farm now that I'm trying to revitalize. You know about General Order Number 11? Oh yes. It issued the, the, the counties that I live in, or my series is in those same counties, Cass County, Bates County, Vernon County. We just had our first derby of the year in Nevada, Missouri, the home of the Bushwhackers, which is the Bushwhacker capital. And of course, Lawrence, Kansas was considered the Jayhawker headquarters. 
so we're just retaliating back and forth. Civil War on Wheels, the idea that came to me, I was racing in Nevada, Missouri, which is home of the Bushwhackers, you know. Some of the guys would come over from Kansas, and there was always tension. And that's right on the border, Missouri and Kansas. I thought about racing stock cars in a series called Civil War on Wheels. Matter of fact, they do that out in California. But uh, closer to home, I thought, derbies, man, that was awesome. And my 10-year-old uh, my son was more into demolition derbies than car racing because it kind of condensed it down to wrecks instead of just going around in circles. You know, he liked that contact, that bang, bang. Every, every, every second there was more excitement. It kept him more excited. I noticed it kept the crowd more excited. They loved that constant uh, bashing of each other. And, of course, the Missouri fans were really into it, and the Kansas fans were really into it in that particular area. It was easy to get them stirred up. I had a driver from Fort Scott, Kansas, named Ron Bolin. And boy, he would bring down the house. They would just go crazy when he would come out across the state line to Nevada, Missouri, home of the Bushwhackers, and leave with the money. It is somewhat dangerous. I've had my ulna broken, which is called a nightstick break, when another car accidentally got diverted at a high speed into mine. And I hung on, and it actually came in and broke my arm. But what I love about it is it's the thrill and the excitement. It's like an amusement park ride. People go to Worlds of Fun. They go to Six Flags. They go to places like a Disneyland. This, this is a big roller. It's a roller coaster of a different kind. It's, uh, it's when you're done, you just you feel so exhilarated, so good. And so we went to this derby, and I'm like, my God, there's death threats. There's all this drama. I was like, man, this is beautiful. I mean. I mean, these people aren't acting, they're trying to, they're being themselves. I learned then that you don't go racing, you don't go to a derby unless you can throw your fists around, because there's going to be fight. And uh, over all my years involved with racing and promoting derbies and in getting drivers angry about rules, etc. I mean, I'll tell you, I've had knocked out of me a few times. And I've seen a lot of the drivers uh, the fights have to be broken up sometimes. They're so intense. But these drivers are so passionate about their sport, they'll go to Fifth City in a minute. You know, you understand why professional wrestling does so well. I compare Derby somewhere between, you know, professional rodeo and professional wrestling. And I, I don't think there's enough drama in Derby. I think more emotion from people, you know. I, I don't think every, I think, I hate losing. And I'm not, I'm, I don't care if anybody, you know, like, I'm not gonna shake some guy's hand because he just kicked my ass. It's like, you kicked my ass, man. You think I'm gonna shake your hand? I know you're cheating, or else you wouldn't have kicked my ass. Well, maybe you didn't cheat, but. Got lucky. Yeah, or <laughs> I just screwed up one or the other. Our experience was Mac against himself, so he was his, he was his own civil war. You know, if, if you worked around him, you'd know that he'd almost set himself up. Uh, just the, uh, maybe it was the drama that he loved, but you know, there's always something. Everybody would grumble about it. It's like, oh, Mac shouldn't drive, it should be Ed, because you know, you want the car to run, you want it to last as long as possible, you want to win. It's not so much the money or anything, it's the prestige. If we want to win, that's what, you know, that's what we're here. But of course it's fun to build something and then destroy it, uh, but we just wanted to be you know, in the game as long as possible. So I'm just curious, how did uh, you go from throwing pots, which you did for many, many years, just uh, how'd you get into the demolition? Well, that was a very long process. I mean, I, I was throwing big things. I got up to 700 pounds where I could throw a 700 pound plate, which, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's five, you know, six feet, all in one piece, and I could hang it. You know, I figured out the techniques to do that. But I, you know, I couldn't move it by myself. The clay wouldn't hold up, so I went into metal. So that's when I started here. I started talking to uh, Bill Wenzel, and uh, I went to a couple of derbies. And all of a sudden, I saw this folk, American folk. I mean, something that isn't going to last. I don't think the combustion engine is going to last. I, uh, we have a crusher right down the street. You wouldn't believe how many tractor trailer loads of big cars are, are leaving. You know, they're all getting smashed. So this thing, I mean, there will always be something to smash, I guess. But, but anyway, that's why I'm into it. I'm into the the people that are in, in the stands. I'm into the. It, you got to go to the pits. 
the announcers, uh, the derby itself, the politics involved with that, the everywhere you go with a different set of rules. There are no rules. I mean, there are rules, there aren't rules. Uh, there's no such... It's not standardized. Not at all. So every place, I like the randomness of it and the chaos of the derby itself. Um, that's what attracts me. I, and a total loss of time when I'm in the car and running. And also, I like, you know, I mean, I also gather sponsors and interact, I mean, the community. You name your sponsors, the, right? Oh, I have. Uh, I'm going to leave somebody out. But, uh, Bill Wenzel at Wenzel Steelworks is probably my biggest one. Um, we build all the cars here, and I, you know, I, bad things happen. I drink, oil falls on the floor and stuff. He puts up with a lot. I couldn't do with what I do without Bill Wenzel. Well, I could do it, but I couldn't do it as well. And he supplies me with a space to stay free. Um, I'm with John Woods. We're kind of artists in residence down here at Wenzel Steelworks. Um, John at Boulevard Beer, they're a big sponsor. David Ford at YJ's, uh, Bill Drummond, Drummond Glass, City Tavern, uh, Galleries, The Dolphin, Fahrenheit. We have a panty shop, Birdies. Uh, the big art paper in town. Uh, they're interested in the project and, and, review. and the review. Uh, Stretch with Grinders. He's a new sponsor. Just just came in with us. Well, you know, like they're like in, in, in circle track racing, everybody was, you know go crazy when somebody crashed. Somebody's like, hey, let's just do a bit more stuff than crash. I think that's that's the story I've always heard, but I also thought possibly it was two blondes trying to get in the same parking lot out on Main Street start the demolition derby, so we're not sure where it started from. But. <laughs> into his uh, Mardi Gras. Thing. We have a float. We've won the last three years in, in traditional. And Peregrine and me, we, uh, I truly like that sense. I, I, God, I don't even know. I mean, I, I like what, I like the, what the energy that everybody does. I like the good spirit that everything's very positive. There's no negativity about any of it. That everybody's equal. 
it's just, well, that's the other thing about Derby. It really drew me to it. Because once you're in the car, it doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't matter, man, you can be a Martian. It doesn't matter. You passed inspection, you know, man, woman, child, you know, God knows what color. Yeah, they, the kids are 13 that run Derby. They sometimes they, but they, you can, as long as you sign that thing, I think 15, maybe. But I have seen 13 year olds in Derby. But the other side of that is I've seen 65 year old, you know, grandmothers in Derby and done pretty damn well. So, you know, it's, there's, it, it, that's what I love about it, you know, it's like, and, and sort of like, it, I guess that's kind of where I go in with YJs, you know. Um, it's it's all acceptance. I mean, as long as you're decent, it's like you respect other people, and there's a sense of respect. And David uh, instills that. He's a big supporter of mine. Uh, he's he's done worlds. You know, every morning I come in, it's like he either gives you <laughs> or he, you know, it it doesn't matter, <laughs> uh, or he leaves you alone, or I don't know what it is about YJs. I'm also making, you know, now I make, I design, I'm also interested in design before function. So I am making fire pits. And uh, I like the the community aspect of a fire pit. How pe actually, when I did the workshop up at the Art Institute, I brought a fire pit with me. And I slowly watched, I, I should have videoed that more so than what we did with the, the building of this car, the evolution of the, the demolition derby car. I should have filmed the fire pit because more people, at first nobody would show up. The next thing I know, hell, there's people at all different times coming to just hang out. I think there's something about a fire that, I, I don't know what it is, but it brings people, it draws people. And people, I noticed people that were at the Art Institute, students that were combative to each other, somehow they'd be sitting around this fire. And maybe they wouldn't be there, they wouldn't talk to each other, but they would be there. And so just by being there, they're, they're sharing a, you know, the same experience. We have, we have people contacting us from all over New York, California, wanting to know what the trick is to it. And it's just, it's the granddad of all derbies. This was the granddaddy of them all, the Platte County Fair, 141st annual. About 50 years worth of demolition derbies here today. And uh, this, this is Missouri's biggest derby. A lot of old bushwhackers here today. <laughs> and this is where they all come, they save it. Doesn't pay a whole lot, but this is like the most popular derby in the state of Missouri. Oh, they love it. As people cut loose, they save it up for one time a year to come to the Platte County Fair. And these guys live for this. The crowd lives for this night. This is the highlight of the year in Platte County, Missouri. Well, it's the longest continuous running fair in the state of Missouri. When the Platte County War happened in 1863, this fair had its inaugural season and they didn't stop. They've run continuously through the battles of 1863, 1864, and 1865, and ever, every year since. On the wall in the Hall of Fame is a photograph taken in 1923 of some of the original participants that were here at the fair in 1863. Jay Reed and me, we. He was really good about, you know, going through the rules. They'd give you a list of rules, and, you know, we'd sit there and talk about it. It's like, okay, here's what you can do, here's what you can't do, but then there's that gray area. So me and him, we kind of just kind of worked with that, worked with the gray area. And, and we hit steel in places that, you know, they, they either find it or they don't. The pits are interesting because the drivers are slow to warm up for two one another. As you can imagine, there's a lot of tension. You know, I'm going to take this guy out. And there's a lot of speculation. It's like, I'll bet he's got an axle stuffed in his frame rail. Let's see if these officials will catch it. So there's a lot of, you know, behind the scenes drama. And uh, there is, in fact, a lot of cheating goes on in a derby. And uh, there's a lot of guys loaded, they call it. That guy's packing some iron. He got some more metal shoved in his frame so it won't bend. During the course of Demolition Derby, there would be one almost every single weekend um, during the summer. You know, it would start in the spring and go into September, October, and it would be we'd go to all these county fairs, and it's just it's to, it was so awesome to. It's almost like you know, 
you, you go to the middle of nowhere. Kansas City is such a um, metropolis of culture, uh, and but you go 20 minutes away and you're in the middle of nowhere, and you just see all these people, you know, and it's so, uh, it's a slice of uh, America. <laughs> Because you see all these people that you know they don't go they don't go into the city and we're you know an hour or two hours away whatever um, and these tiny little places just in the middle of fields and nowhere and if it's like a, a boy scout camp that uh, takes care of the the track and uh, all it is just just a dirt strip but with hay bales around it or something like that and sometimes a fence and not even that and it just I, all the different people. Uh, you know, everybody brings their kids out and sits on the lawns, and there's babies and grandmas, and uh, and uh, everybody just, you know, is so excited to see the cars get smashed up. I mean, that's why people watch NASCAR to see the wrecks and to see the fire, and that's why people go. And the mud will be flying, and you know, uh, everybody's drinking PBR and uh, eating hot dogs and hamburgers that the you know JCs have cooked up. It's just, it's like a, it's a county fair. It's just. I don't know, it's just so much fun and reminds me so much of my childhood. You know, Kansas City seems like a big metropolis to some people, but back way before I was a kid, obviously, back in the day, these were all small towns around here. So the country kids would come to the fairgrounds at the edge of town and hang out with the city kids, and the mom and dad would come, and the food was just awesome. The food came from all parts of the county. and. Uh, it was a great place to eat, it was a great place to meet with friends, and the kids had their money saved up, their allowance from all summer, and they would ride the carnival rides. And, you know, of course, when I was a little kid and we went to the demolition derby, you definitely had to get on the bumper cars. That was a must. And there was nothing quite as thrilling as the bumper cars to me. I was just kind of a motorhead geek, but, you know, the fact that you could get up high in a Ferris wheel and overlook the entire fairgrounds, it was just beautiful. When me and my brother Brandon were working as the Summer of Brothers on these documentary projects on the subculture of Kansas City, we fell in love with Demolition Derby, We Ain't Stupid, and Civil War on Wheels. The carnivals themselves were fascinating. We would also go to the rides. My family was there. My son went along. He, did, he held mics. He shot video. He was like six years old at the time. My baby was there. My girlfriend was there. My whole family, uh, my brother, my brother's wife, um, we were all involved. And we would play games and, and ride carnival rides. And we just really fell in love with the whole atmosphere, the cultural atmosphere of county fairs. Wyandotte County, Platte County, Cass County. Um, the county fairs were just incredible spectacles. And there were like these small town fields. And there you would go look at the animals in the stalls with the 4-H club. and get a corn dog and popcorn and play games and you know throw uh, throw things onto hoops and win little teddy bears and ride the old carny rides it was a blast but then the demolition derby we'd go down into the pits my family was in the pits and it was so much fun it was just uh, it was a rock and roll experience for real Mac McClanahan wow I like anybody that's an artist. I'm an artist myself. I used to hand letter the numbers on race cars and it was my art form. And Mac was decorating his cars up and it was like, man, that's really cool. And I realized, you know, it takes a little intelligence to finesse this thing. And I said, we ain't stupid. I got a huge kick out of that. We Ain't Stupid was actually heavily influenced by the Art Institute. And they were really different team-wise from the other competitors of the typical demolition derbies that we would attend. Um, the cars were the cars were like art cars. They were decorated professionally with decals. They were professionally painted. They were just really gorgeous automobiles, and they just stood out. And there was some tension in the pits between Mac McClanahan and We Ain't Stupid team, who are a bunch of art kids from the city and a bunch of country boys from all around the metro region maybe 16 county region around Kansas City. Can you tell me about some of your crew members about how uh, were a lot of the Weeding Stupid Team Art Institute folks? No, we had, I mean, we had professional mechanics. Mm -hmm. We had uh, carpenters. Uh, some were, yeah, like 50% were 
from the Art Institute or we had connections through, a lot of them actually were through an ex-girlfriend of mine that I had made friends with when we were seeing each other and uh, were demolition derby lovers and uh, weren't really artists. They were people who, who just wanted to be involved with the project. My brother was uh, really good friends with Mac and uh, they went to demolition derby together and Mac said, this is what I want to do. And so my brother called me up one night and said, uh, hey, what are you doing? Do you want to come and uh, take some pictures to document some demolition derby? So I went and didn't have anything else to do. And I went down and they were starting to tear up cars. And so I just started to document uh, the whole process of getting the car and uh, destroying the car. And then people would come and uh, they were at Twins' shop. And we'd have drink beer, have barbecue, spend several hours just um, working on it from the beginning to the end. We have had probably in and out of the project probably 50 people and there are some people I had an incredible guy uh, Jay was my crew chief at the beginning an incredible guy uh, actually we came to a crossroads where I wanted something different than he did but like you say everybody grows out of it Ed grew out of it he, he drove his own car they went on Jay and Ed went on to build a couple of derby cars on their own and derby them, which I was real happy about. Mac, it's like, it's too bad. He, he was really, really great and he brought all these people together that knew exactly what they were doing and uh, were um, really good at the things that they did. And they would do the things on the cars and they'd say, no, that's not right, and he would destroy it and you know, tear it up and redo it back the, the way he wanted to do it. And that sort of alienated people after three years of this happening over and over again and Matt wasn't always the greatest driver either and I mean I think the one race he was in it was like three minutes and he was done. Three minutes! And it was over. Um, and uh, Ed was a much better driver than Mac was which is sad. That was just part of it. You know here's here's this thing bless it it's going to go get, get wrecked. You know uh, hopefully Mac comes back in one piece. Um, hopefully nothing flies in someone's face. Get everybody behind that. Everybody's now a part of it because they were here. It was in the Mardi Gras parade. Everybody saw it. Everybody touched it. Everybody drank beer with Mac. Everybody heard the stories and, and the well-wishers and, and everybody. You know? So when it goes, it goes with everybody or everybody goes with it. That kind of is a feel I got from it. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, not just a bunch of guys like us that do know how to knock tin going out there and doing it with beer, but getting a lot of other people kind of involved with it emotionally, spiritually, physically. The car would come to, he would, even after the group fell away and stopped being so much of a group anymore, he still would work on it, still go, still go to derbies, uh, but it would always be a part of uh, Mardi Gras and be a, uh, be a float and uh, to get you know to get recognition and attention. It's like that's what artists do. They go out and put their stuff out. So hey, come and see me. And uh, so yeah, it was pro it was. I'm sure it was blessed. Uh, I think it was a priest that blessed it. And uh, it was always part of any street fair or any uh, event like that, and probably even fashion show that was down in the um, crossroads. We we were involved with First Friday a couple of times just showing the car through the Dolphin Art Gallery uh, and also through YJ Snack Bar. Uh, we did performances there where we had the car, we had twice, uh, we had the car christened uh, by priests to uh, send it on its, on its voyage, each new car we did. Um, so that way we were involved with the uh, with Crossroads quite a bit or on the early going. And you were in the Mardi Gras too, weren't you? Well, that's another aspect of the car. We're taking it where there wasn't there wasn't a, a derby car in the Mardi Gras. Yet we were pulling the car. We were using the car to pull a massive Mardi Gras float, and the car itself became part of the float, which we were really excited about. Max crew. It was a mixed crew, you know. Max worked in the Armadale district, and so. He had a lot of construction worker friends and all the guys that come out and help work on the car in the evenings after work. I think that's where they built their car. I'm not certain of it. But 
for some reason, somebody in that group was affiliated with the uh, Art Institute people. And so, as I was saying, you know, somebody from the Kansas City Arts, Art Institute is going to wear his bib overalls a slightly bit different than somebody from the country. So, uh, it was easy to spot these characters. And, uh, you know, there was some of those Art Institute kids that just got out of there with their skin. I imagine it's real different because all the other cars were just, you know, uh, just not together. And we had almost, we had professionals, sort of. You know, everybody, it, it, Mac brought together a group of people who were specifically uh, trained in these certain aspects of working on the car. So he brought together all these people that were excellent at their specific uh, individual tasks. And then he decided he could do everything better than everyone else, and he would change everything that they would do. But in the beginning, um, so Ed would do all the welding, and M Mac would do some of the welding too, but Ed would do a lot of the welding. Uh, my brother was very very mechanical and worked on cars for a long time. The Rescue brothers, they owned their own service station, and they were, you know, they were the guys who did all the, uh, worked on the engines. Um, Dennis, uh, uh, he would, you know, he made the cars look clean and, you know, polished with all our uh, the logos and the decals. While everybody else, you know, at the demolition derby would just spray paint on their cars. I mean, ours looked so professional, sort of. Most of my derby team was into derby. They didn't really care about the art. What the art I was doing with it. They were totally, they totally just loved being in the demolition derby, and we were all on the same page there. And then every Thursday night, I, I mean, I invited all the artists, every Thursday night here, it was a big scene. And people would come and work on the car. But all artists, anybody and everybody were welcome to come work on the car. Sometimes we'd have more women here than men working on the car, which I loved. Thursday nights were a really interesting scene. Um, a lot of the people from the art scene, there's a lot of different cliques, a lot of different groupings in the art scene. And Mac was one of the chieftains of the art scene. People would come over to Bill Wenzel's Steelworks and uh, hang out for barbecues, um, work on cars. Uh, we did interviews there. Um, everybody would eat, everybody would drink. Boulevard Brewery was one of the uh, sponsors, so there was always tons of Boulevard beer. And uh, it was just a great experience. But like I said, Mac was really a leader and a chieftain of this whole clique within the art scene, within the art scene. And uh, Thursday nights at Winslow Steel were really fun. You know, some of the girls in the scene, uh, uh, Jennifer and uh, was going out with Ed and uh, Mary Smith and was good friends with Ed, I mean with, uh, with uh, Mac and uh, their friend Susan and uh, Renee and uh, let's see, then uh, when we started to do more things and be more recognized. Um, Steve Paul with the star would be down, and uh, I think I have everybody that I can think of that was there. And so, uh, and Wenzel would be there, and uh, Bill, I mean, um, uh, Bill Woods, who lived behind uh, Outsider Artist. John. John Woods, who lived behind uh, um, Wenzel's place. Derby's really changed. Um... In 2003, 2004, and earlier when Mac was doing it earlier, before I met him, but by the time we got there in 2004, Derby was really at its heyday. I mean, there were hundreds of cars. Um, it would go on for five, six, seven hours late into the night. Hundreds and five, six hundred, seven hundred people would come and watch. At the Platte County Fair, thousands of people would come and watch. And there's a lot of fewer old school cars left around now so derby has really declined and so basically this documentary is fascinating in the sense that we caught it in a heyday when there was still a lot of uh, old school combustible engine cars around the community and uh, unfortunately the sport has declined so this film is a tribute to demolition derby as it once was and maybe someday they'll be uh, wrecking Priuses. And what's happened is, and why there are no uh, cars, and it's not as accessible to people, is because the scrap metal has become so expensive. Where you used to be able to get a car, a competitive car, 
for maybe a hundred bucks or even given to you, now you're paying anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars. And you really have to have a commitment and you're putting you're putting parts that you've already collected off other cars into that. And that's one of the reasons why one of the reasons why I got out of it. Because I wanted I wanted to be more art than dirty. And it was all, and I still love Derby, don't get me wrong, and I wish I was, I, I could be in it more, and I will be in it. But uh, I'm, I think when I go on next time, I'm not, I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to try to win with the car that I got, but I'm going in to tear that car, and I'm going to be, and I, 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 I won't take any trophy, and I won't take any money, even if I win, if I'm lucky enough to do so. I just want to go in there and compete. And I, it, uh, that's kind of a realization I've had in like the last six months that I don't care about that. Derby car and the fastest art car, which he won maybe or a couple times. I'm, yeah, and um, Mac McClanahan eventually, once he got out of Demolition Derby Crash Em Ups, Mac got his Demolition Derby car into the Houston Art Car Parade and was certified as an art car. And then he raced it at the Bonneville Slot Flats and won the world championship for fastest art car. So that's something that Mac's really proud of, and he's currently lost that title to uh. Dotson, I believe, and um, but he's going to be coming back for more. Yeah, that was that was like the art car parade, taking a demolition derby car where a demolition derby car had never been, or maybe shouldn't even be, but yet here it is. Um, it was the first demolition derby car to be in the Houston Art Car Parade, which is a gigantic event. Uh, over, literally, uh, over a hundred thousand people go to this, and hundreds, literally hundreds of art cars. So immediately it was somewhere where you wouldn't know. The first time a demolition derby car had ever been there. Next was Bonneville Salt Flats. We are the first demolition derby car ever on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Since then, there's been several others. It's pretty fun. 
and to my knowledge, we're the world's fastest demolition derby art car in the world. What I see in anything in motorsports, and I'm kind of odd this way, but I see it all as an art form, especially when it comes down to capturing the image of, of a destroyed derby car in a photo or on film. And I've often wondered, man, that would be awesome to see this art form captured where more people could appreciate it. And, uh, there's something about a ragged old fender waving in the breeze out there while they're backing into another car and the flames and the fire belching and you know I recall at the Platte County Fair a famous photo. Here's this derby car in the middle of the Platte County Fair and you can see 1863 on the side of the building and fires belching out of his headers that are coming up through the, the hood and the driver's like all muddy and he's just like got like terror in his eyes you know and fear and and uh, you can see the emotion in those derby drivers' eyes because it's an open cockpit type thing where you can look in the car and see them in there just fighting the, the wheel. And some of them will even be adjusting the distributor as they drive, you know. It's just, it's cool, man. It's really an art form. As a promoter, I noticed a lot of the derbies were, uh, it seemed like the uh, tech, the tech guys were like uh, intimidating. They didn't want to find illegal about these old boys' car from Cass County. They didn't want to find anything illegal about the guys from Vernon County. And uh, we brought a scope, fiber optic scope, to stick up in the frame. We could find where they had welded a railroad tie iron or, or a, a farm implements up inside the frame. I mean, they'd cut an axle off and shove it in there and make those cars even stronger where they wouldn't have been. And uh, it aggravated them more. They, they didn't want to cooperate. There was guys that would uh, load up and go home rather than be caught cheating. So it, it kind of was the downfall of the derbies. A lot of them wanted to win, but yet they didn't want to get caught cheating. And it's hard to win a derby without cheating. Uh, Jay Reed, who was my crew chief at the time, and me went out, went out to the, the McLeod um, Derby, which was a, an incredible sight. It's just you couldn't get more country. You could. The, the, the sun ride, you know, goes down and there's people up there, you just silhouettes of people hammering their cars and it's, it's, it's everything I loved about Derby. And there was this one wagon that was just kicking everybody's ass. And it's like, well, we got to go back in the pits and find out what, what this guy's up to and stuff. And uh, so Jay, I got the camera and Jay's like talking to the guy and, and the guy's a little nervous because I'm using a video camera. Jay's asking him all these questions about his car and the guy's just being real, not, not talking about anything. And uh, finally he just got, yeah, he'd had a few cocktails. Had, well, we had two. And uh, he finally just got frustrated and started walking away and finally just turned around and goes, hey, flipped us off and said, hey, we ain't stupid.
I could uh, take it take it to the R car parade. Um, I'm losing thought. Hold it. Oh, you, we can come back to it. Uh, what's the question again? Uh, the salt flats piece. Okay. You want to cut for just a second here? Yeah, let's cut. Remember you by Come on baby give me something I do remember you by Hey just a little bit of something I saw the love of God I'm gonna see my baby